Hello and welcome back to Foxy TV, episode 127. A bit of a different episode this week. Usually I head out to an install um, or to and get some footage around a certain theme. Now this week I was needed in, in the truck as Russ's injury replacement. So um, I didn't get a chance to really go in depth and ask questions at, at any of the installs. Although I did get a little bit of footage of this view. How nice is that view at an install we did yesterday at, out at Samson Vale. So yeah, a bit of a different episode this week. Um, and also, we haven't done a bit of a business slash industry update in a while. So in a future episode, I'll be speaking to Jake and Phoebe, but suffice to say, we are super busy here at Foxy Home Staging. Um, August was our biggest month ever again. Um, we got to 82 installs in the month of August. So well done team. And to help meet this demand, um, we're hiring. So we are looking for someone to join the logistics team in the truck. And this week, I believe yesterday, we also posted a new job, uh, a personal assistant to Phoebe. So if you're interested in either, either of those jobs, just head to our social media for more information. So in this episode, Jake was kind enough to speak to Phoebe um, to ask her some questions on camera outside their home earlier this morning. Um, the majority of the episode, or the, sorry, the main topic of this week's episode is around uh, finding your ideal client or your target market and why that is important. And then we also answer some questions from Instagram, one sec. So the questions from Instagram, a few different topics, styling courses, uh, marketing advice, how we're able to do over 80 installs a month, when to transition from winter to summer styling, and our communication process. So um, let's head to Jake and Phoebe's house now for that Q&A. We're at uh, home this morning as we're <laughs> Got a birthday Charlie's in the house, birthday. yes. Um, we're out the front because it's noisy and chaotic inside, so we're just going to answer a question that came through, um, and that is... We're not ignoring our children. My sister is <laughs> <in there. laughs> They do have adult supervision. Disclaimer. <laughs> so we got a comment asking about um, ideal clients, um, I guess from a home, home staging point of view. So um, another stager reached out and said they were asked who their ideal client was, and, and they had a hard time answering it. Um, he said it's easy to say anybody who's selling their home, but it's also hard to narrow it down more than that. So we just thought we'd, oh, I'm going to ask you the question, who's our ideal client? How do we think about it? Why is it important? Uh, I think naturally we narrow down our ideal client anyway, because we are, when we go and look who um, our target buyer is um, and how we're going to style a home, we are also naturally, we can also define our target sellers and target customer the same way. So we have a, a group of uh, people, so you've got, you'll have Sellers who are um, selling a home for the first time. You have sellers who are actually done this multiple times. So investors who are reselling. You've got um, developers who are obviously doing it literally all of the time. It's literally the bulk of their stuff. And you have downsizers who have the really um, the more emotional attachment to it. They've been in the home for 30 plus years, all those memories, and then they're leaving their family home. So we actually have a bulk. Of, and whilst this doesn't, um, this group of ideal customers don't necessarily uh, drive the structure of our business. They really do uh, change the way uh, I do business with these vendors when I walk in and I have a consultation with them. If we if we take a step back, our ideal client, um, we've got two groups basically. Um, and for us at Foxy, we've actually got three groups of targets that we look at. So we're basically, we've got um, obviously someone who's going to sell their home which is very, very broad. Like I just said, we can narrow it down further. We have agents who are real estate agents who we are looking to build relationships with because they are also our ideal, ideal customer. That is ongoing, repeat work. We can build those relationships. They can. We have a trusted relationship that they can pass on to their vendors. So that's another group of um, customer that we have. Uh, a little bit different here at Foxy, we also have stylists. So um, we also, when we're looking at the structure of our social media, things like that, we have three different uh, groups that we do have targets towards. Um, so if I go back to the, the groups within, obviously our paid group would be the vendors, so people who are looking to sell their home. So if I look at the different groups within those, so like I said, I, I've got a really good example of one at the moment. We just styled the property, had a really good conversation. Actually, we just collected it, it's just sold. And the process was really, really um, overwhelming for this particular owner. She'd been in the home for 30 plus years. She just had a grandson. It was moving away from the family home, going into a unit in the city. They hadn't been able to find a unit because the market's so tough. But all of those emotional attachments and strings to the to the property, when we're dealing with a downsizer, it, that's a significant part of how we uh, approach the consult, how we approach everything. Um, 
investors, again, that's something that they need a return on investment. So they need to make sure all those boxes are ticked. Everything is different, again, on how we approach those conversations. Uh, first home sellers, they've never ever been through the experience. So they need to be uh, coached along the experience. And this is exactly the same as a real estate agent. So when someone's selling their home for the first time, they're going to need a lot more help along the way. They need reassurance. They need the, basically uh, the process needs to be laid out for them. Um, and then developers would be the other group who are obviously doing it all the time, not as much price sensitive as they are um, price effective and they need it to have bang for buck, but then it does need to make sense because again, it's a business transaction. So each group has a different structure as to how we would deal with them. But the overarching thing for us, a price sensitive customer, someone who comes to us and says, I want the cheapest, sharpen your pencil, give me the best quote that you can get, I need I need a discount. They're not our ideal customer. They're not someone that I, I would be chasing the work for. Um, but, yeah, I think that's, that's as much as I can narrow would it Would it be fair to say, because, I mean, you've just talked about a number of different groups and yeah. we... I wouldn't say that we target anyone in particular. No, 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 no. no. They, um, that's just how I our approach to each of them is different, but we yes. do know who is not our target, like Correct. you just said. So that's yeah. an, that's just as important as knowing who your target is, is who's not our target. Yeah, absolutely. A and um, in terms of the agents, you mentioned them being a, a group that, hmm. I guess, a customer in a, key in a way, customer, one of our key... or a stakeholder, or yeah, somebody yeah. who's important, you know, drives business. Um, but they're not all equal either, right? No, definitely not. So you, again, you have agents who completely understand the process. You've got agents who are new to the process and really unsure on how to incorporate it. They can see the benefit, but they're difficult. To, it's, they're at a stage where it's difficult for them to incorporate it into their pitch, incorporate it into justification to a vendor as to how it's they're going to get that return on investment. So that, or they've got local uh, competition where there's freestyling and they're trying to compete with that. So it's helping those agents figure out the best way to present and pitch styling. Not that it's necessarily an agent's job to sell styling, but it's giving them the tools to be able to have the conversations to get us through the door. Um, and then there's those agents who literally will text, I need this, okay, I've got another one for next week, I need this, I need, and I've got to be on the ball, turn around, time, I can't let the communication slip, I can't let it, because they are fully sold on styling. It's an integrated part, seamless part of their pitch. You don't list with them without having styling done. So that that's just a different level of what they provide, that the stuff we've got to provide for them when it comes to communication, flexibility, Turn around everything like that. So definitely not all the same. Hey, okay, Phoebe, I've got a couple of uh, questions that have come through mm -hmm. from Co that Cody I has sent me to ask you. No, um, we're going to try and keep this fairly quick. So mm -hmm. we'll see how we go. So the first one um, is: When do you transition from winter to summer styling? Well, if you go and look or at the colors, we? and well, yeah, I was going to say right now you look at the colors in store. You still got pastels. You still have the exact same colors. Well, actually, but. Adairs is just born in butters, which are the warmer colours, literally at the end of winter. So to me, we've just had pastels through the entirety of, of winter. The colour trends are behind because of COVID. Why do we need to keep up with it? Uh, to, to me, like, I won't use huge, big, fluffy throw rugs on beds in the middle of summer. Um, and in Queensland, for us up here, we kind of warm all year round. So I don't go for heavy, rich, dark colours at any point in the year. We are always light and fresh and airy. We still have all the lifestyle shots. We have all the San Pellegrino outside at any point in the year because there is basically we're outside all year. So in Queensland, that's, I can't give you a, a definitive. We don't transition. We're pretty much, you'll see, same oh. throughout, I'd say. And when you do transition, it's not like a decision where you sit down with the you team do. and go, okay, from next week we're no. doing this. It's just... We don't have to find, I wouldn't say yeah. we have to find seasons to be able to do that, but also the stores haven't done it yet uh, this year either. So Okay, that was from Beautiful Living New Zealand. Uh, next one is oh, thanks, uh, from Adore Styling. How can you do a job in such a little amount of time? Okay, so Keep what you see, okay, yeah, what you see on camera is an ad and an install. What you don't see on camera is the five to six hours we spent preparing the property. So from consult to me doing the furniture selections to me making sure everything is ready and not to stop there to the girls doing the actual tangible selections and everything getting done to the boys loading the truck, five to six hours at the warehouse that you don't see. And, and after years of really focusing on oh. efficiency and speed, we know what, yeah, what we need to do. We know you have five people on a job. Everybody knows what they need to do to make it go faster. Yeah, so it's, it's all those things yep. working together. How, uh, how was that for a good answer? <laughs> what, are you proud of yourself? No, I like it was fast. <laughs> okay, from Cookabar Ridge, what styling courses or workshops would you recommend? Oh, I have none. Not because they're not out there? No, not because, just because literally for me being out there and doing it, tend, like actually being in there is better than it, like go do some work experience. You're much, much better off doing that, getting it in and dirty and rather than, if I could do one, 
it'd be the Three Birds Reno. I looked at the Sherry Barber course. I haven't done that yet, but I think the Three Birds Reno course, I think I'd like to do that. I okay. just need to find the house to renovate. All right. Um, let's see here. Style Bite Home Staging has asked, can you please share your communication process from, I guess, Eva first has shared that. We'll get Eva to link it up because she's done our full... Com oh, I've interrupted you. Communication <laughs> with agents? Is that what you mean? Well, no, no. From... The client, so oh, yeah. from when you so meet the client both. to onboarding. Yep. Eva has shared, she's done a full blog post on it. She's done at any point in time along the timeline how I'm communicating and dealing with an agent versus where the communication sits with a vendor. So she's done that. I'll get Cody share it. Okay. And last but not least from Function and Flair, and this has potential to be a long answer, so we'll try and keep it not long. Uh, what is your best marketing advice, marketing advice for securing the first staging jobs? Ooh. How do you get the first jobs? We've kind of done a bit of, covered this before. I remember but... leaving and you'd be like... Fake it till you make it, a little bit. And I was like, I felt, again, imposter syndrome. Um, so you are the expert. You're there as the expert. Behave as the expert. Give honest advice. Don't overstep your bounds. Don't overpromise. Don't say you're going to deliver something when you can't. Um, be authentic. The, the about, jobs will come. What about marketing, though? How do you get oh, your name out there? How do you, you get a need meeting? You to make as many cold, cold calls as you can. Yep. Literally, there was a, it's just work, a very it? visible difference, a tangible difference in how many phone calls and leads I would get after I'd ring agents. It still happens now. We haven't done them in such a long time, our cold calls. But when we were quiet, like about a year ago, we would still I'd get the girls to get on the phone and make cold calls. And it's not to sell it, it's to say hi, to get your name in the back of someone's mind. Um, and now, now we're, we're fortunate that word of mouth is helping us along, so we haven't had to do cold calls. Do them, They'll, they will work magic. Good answer. Thanks, Evie. Thank you to everyone who sent through questions. The link to the communication process article Eva wrote um, is in the description of the video, apart from if you're watching on Instagram, um, IGTV, you'll just have to head over to YouTube or Facebook to find that link. If you have questions that you would like answered in a future video, it looks like I'll be in the truck again next week, so we may look to do another round of Q&A, so leave them in the comment section below. But that is it for this week's episode, episode 127. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you back here next week.